this can make or break whether or not you have a relaxer and a texturizer. You could have intended to have a texturizer, but end up with a relaxer. And it can be the difference between just a minute or two. What's up, YouTube family? It's your girl, Brandy Lucas, here with you guys. And if you are new to my channel, what is up? Thank you so much for hopping in and checking out my video. I am a Dallas, Texas based short hair stylist, a beauty short hair content creator, and a podcaster. So if you are about this short hair life, you are in the right place. Today, I am chit chatting with you guys about a topic that I get asked about a lot. So I'm like, okay, bring it to the channel. Let the people know. Let's get clear on some things. And the topic we're going to chat about is what is the difference between a relaxer and a texturizer? And by the end of this video, you'll be crystal clear on which is the best for you. So if you've been trying to figure that thing out, we're going to do it together today. You'll walk away with all of the info and insight you need to make the best decision for your hair. So stay tuned. All right, let's start from the top. So texturizers and relaxers. Often when we hear these, we think of two different chemicals, but that's not the truth. Often when you get a texturizer, it is giving us the impression or the purpose of the texturizer would be to loosen the curl pattern of the hair, leaving you with textury, curly, wash and go-esque type hair. On the other hand, a relaxer is meant to straighten your hair. So of course, if you are not chemically processed in any way, you're starting with your natural hair. If your natural curl pattern is African American hair, then you're going to have some coil or curl to the hair. So relaxers are meant to straighten the curl coil out of the hair, leaving you with a straighter texture. So I have a relaxer. If this is new to you, what a relaxer is meant to do is to straighten all of the curl and coil from your hair, leaving you with a straighter texture hair. On the other hand, a texturizer is supposed to loosen the natural curl or coil of your hair, depending where you end on the C's, B's and all of that, which I won't get into. Wherever you end on that, it's supposed to gradually loosen the curl, leaving you with some curl left over and not completely straight. This is where the problem comes in. The chemical agent that is used to do all of this straightening or lightly softening the curl is generally the same chemical. Often we are thinking that a texturizer is a completely different chemical from the relaxer. Where these processes differ is basically in the processing time. So a relaxer, generally, depending on your texture and just the unique characteristics of your hair, is processed anywhere between 14, 18 minutes. It's all depending on the manufacturer's directions. While a texturizer's processing time would be shorter because, of course, we're not trying to go from curly coily to straight. We're just, just trying to loosen the curl pattern. So of course we wouldn't need the same amount of processing time we would if we were trying to go from curly to straight because we're trying to go from curly to looser curl. A lot of times I've heard people say I'm natural. I don't want to go all the way to a relaxer. So I'm going to get a texturizer and I have to break it down like this. If you're getting a texturizer, you're getting a relaxer. You're not processing the relaxer to the maximum time but you are getting a relaxer. It's meant to straighten the hair, not to the extent that a relaxer would straighten it, but it's doing the same thing and the active ingredient in the chemical is the same. I hope I ain't busting nobody's bubble out here. If you out here telling people that you doing texturizers and it's completely different. Some of you guys have my short hair ebook where I really dive deep and break down all of the chemical components of relaxers so that you can make the decision on what's the best relaxer for your hair based on your uh, health regimen, your body, uh, your medications, and all of the things that are unique to you as an individual. Those are things that should definitely be taken into consideration when you're deciding which relaxer is best for you. This is not a one-size-fits-all type of situation. You definitely want to know um, which relaxer works best with your 
individual characteristics. The best way for you to decide whether a relaxer or a texturizer is the best route for you is to think of your end result. What are you hoping will be the final texture of your hair? Are you leaning more toward straight hair or would you like to relax your curl but still maintain some type of curl or wave pattern to your hair? Now, I have to be clear. If your natural hair with no chemical on it is not already a curly or coily texture, you are not going to get it by putting a texturizer on your hair. This chemical is not designed to give you curly hair. All it's going to do is straighten your natural curl pattern to varying degrees. Now, mind you, this chemical is the same chemical. So if we are going from our natural hair, no chemical on it, no color on it, coily, uh, 3C, 4C, whatever, kinky, curly, coily textured hair, what we can expect to happen is if we put the chemical on and we go about 10 minutes, depending on the texture of the hair, you're going to see it loosen just a little bit. Then as we go into the, from the 10 minute mark into the 12 to 13 minute mark, you'll see another degree of loosening if we continue to let the chemical process to its maximum time deemed by the manufacturer, then we'll get straight hair. But if we stop it somewhere in between before we get all the way to the straight side, then you'll still have the natural curl pattern just on a loosened curl pattern. So sometimes I think that people think, if I use a texturizer, it's going to give me the curl pattern of insert your favorite celebrity or insert your favorite person that you follow who has this springy curly hair. No, we have to manage our expectation. It's going to take the hair that you have and loosen the curl pattern of your natural hair. So there are some people who do not have a lot of curl to their hair. There are some people whose hair is mostly wavy. We all have a individual situation to our hair so you have to manage your expectation and know what the end goal is and also it's important for you to know that this texturizer is not going to give you something that you already didn't start out with a lot of people are rocking their natural hair and their choice from going from a relaxer to natural hair is because they wanted their hair to be healthier I hear that all the time. I went natural because I wanted my hair to be healthier. I have to dispel the myth that wearing a relaxer or wearing your hair natural is going to magically make your hair healthy. It is not the truth. However you wear your hair, whether it be natural or relaxed, and I believe that you guys, if you've seen other ones of my videos, you've heard me talk about this, neither one is a quick fix for healthy hair. Healthy hair has so much to do with you as an individual, not how you're styling and processing. Yes, it plays a part, but your diet, your overall health as an individual, your water intake, any supplements that you're dealing with, stress, hormones, there are so many factors that have a heavy contribution to the health of our hair. So I want to make sure that I'm putting out the information that helps us understand that wearing your hair relaxed does not make it uh, less or more healthy, just as going natural does not make your hair less or more healthy. It's all about the holistic approach to hair care that is going to benefit where you will really see your hair thrive, where you will hear, see your hair strengthen and respond. So which is the better option? Is it a relaxer or is it a texturizer? And the answer, my friends, lies with you. What are you trying to do with your hair? What is your day to day? Do you want straight hair where you can take your scarf off, finger style through your hair, get up and go about your day or possibly wrap your hair, comb it with a um, feather comb, give yourself a little razzle dazzle and be out of the house? Or are you a person who wants to wear their hair in a curly style? Are you a swimmer? Do you sweat in your hair? Are you a person who likes the versatility of sometimes going straight and sometimes going curly? These are the questions that will help you make the best decision for yourself 
on whether or not a relaxer or texturizer is best for you. If you are leaning toward wearing a relaxer, then you'll have the ease of styling. You'll have straight hair. If you want to wear your hair in a curly style, you have the option to set it on rods, to have it curl thermal style by your stylist. We don't want no heat damage at the salon. So you still also have the versatility to wear curly styles, but overall, in general, your hair is going to be straight until it's time for you to do your retouch. On the other hand, if you are partial to wearing your hair in a curly style, you're sweating in your scalp, you like the versatility of a wash and go, and you sometimes wanna wear it straight, then a texturizer may be the best option for you. It'll give you that versatility that you want. One thing that you will have to be concerned with is the likeliness of you heat styling your hair too much and causing damage. So if you like to wear your hair straight sometimes and also wear it curly, you have to be very strategic on how you make those shifts so that you make sure that your hair is not being heat styled too much where you're burning it out and you should have just got a relaxer in the first place. So those are some ways that, given all the facts, you can make the best decision for yourself. Whether you lean on the side of a relaxer or a texturizer, as a professional, y'all know how I am, I am going to caution you with doing any chemical service yourself at home. The processing time that we talked about earlier in the video is key. This can make or break whether or not you have a relaxer and a texturizer. You could have intended to have a texturizer, but end up with a relaxer. And it can be the difference between just a minute or two. So I want you guys to be really, really mindful when you're chemically processing your hair in any way. I always suggest that you go to a stylist to have your texturizer or relaxer done for the best results. I hope this video gave you all the tea you needed to make the best decision for your hair as an individual. You have to approach your hair care decisions based on your hair. So whether you're leaning toward a relaxer or a texturizer, I hope that the information in this video gave you everything you needed to make the best decision for yourself. If you have any additional questions, do not hesitate to drop them in the comments below. If you have questions on this topic or any other short hair topic, I want y'all to know that I am here to help you navigate this space. So don't hesitate to drop them below. If you're not already following me on Instagram, you tripping, but here's your chance. Follow me at I am Brandy Lucas on Instagram. If you found this video helpful, I hope that you will hit that subscribe button and also make sure that you tap that bell notification so that you don't miss any of my video uploads. I upload videos on Monday. I know here on my YouTube channel, I generally talk about short hair tea, but I wanted to announce and invite you guys to check out my brand new podcast. It's called the Sheer Resilience Podcast, and I am super excited about it. So on Sheer Resilience Podcast, we're pulling back the curtain on the carefully curated pictures we show on Instagram and all of the highlight reels, and we're diving deep into the stories of resilience. As women, we go through some things. My guest and I will share stories, helping other women understand that someone has been where you are and made it through. My hope is that we all get stronger together. I don't know about y'all, but it always feels better to know that someone has been through something that I am currently going through. So on Sheer Resilience, we're sharing those stories to help us all know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You're going to make it through, sis. It's the whole point of the podcast. So if you guys are interested in that, I would love for you to join me on my podcast. It's on all of the major platforms, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. We out here, y'all. The Sheer Resilience Podcast. Don't hesitate to connect with me on Instagram. Chat with y'all later.